The Omnitrix, one of the most powerful devices in all of fiction that allows the user to change into any alien species available in the watch. Want a seven foot red Hulk alien? Boom, you're it. But a device as powerful as the Omnitrix, can we make it in real life? And the answer might shock you, let me explain. First, let's understand the Omnitrix. The main core of the Omnitrix is its ability to change one species from one form to another. This is the hardest part to replicate in real life. But if you watch my short, I talked about how we could recreate the transformation process with the aid of nanobots. So basically, the idea is that the supercomputer in our own hypothetical Omnitrix will scan the alien, not just the DNA, but cell behavior, biochemistry, everything. And with that information, it sends signals to 10 trillion nanobots, each smaller than a strand of DNA. Their job, rewrite your body from the inside out, DNA, muscles, and even preserve your mind. On paper, all of this sounds okay and right, but when you look at the science behind it, like some of you also pointed out, it won't make sense. Like when you change into an eight foot alien, where does the extra mass come from? Or when you change into a two foot alien, where does the extra mass go to? Because according to the law of conservation of mass, mass can't just appear or disappear. It has to go and come from somewhere. And if you wanna say, why can't we just edit your DNA to make you bigger? That can work. Just that you will have the big size, but your mass will still remain the same. And with the increase in size, while mass remains constant, that just means you become less dense. And also reduction in size while mass remains constant just means you will become more dense which isn't what we are looking for for our real life Omnitrix. But that's where my new theory comes in, which is more factual and backed by real life science. Firstly, what to note is if you are under 18, everything in this video is just hypothetical and dangerous and not to be recreated at home. So let's get into it. Now for our Omnitrix, we will need 200 terabytes of data storage to store everything about one alien needed to know to change the human gene to that alien, which will just be 200 terabytes. But for our Omnitrix, we will put in a 100 exabyte quantum storage disk to store millions of alien species data. Some of you also suggested storing DNA in a satellite and having the watch pull it when needed, like the prototype Omnitrix connecting to Primus. Cool idea, but it'd mean you're stuck in range of that satellite. Go to another galaxy, it stops working, not good. But for our own Omnitrix, you can go anywhere in the universe and it will still work. And for that ability, we will need the 100 exabyte disk storage within the Omnitrix, which has to be very small and thick, like a small average battery, which can store millions of alien DNA info. And since aliens are not yet real or proven to be real, we could theoretically make a model in a lab of what one could be for the Omnitrix to transform you to. But that would need serious precision in making the DNA. But back to the storage, and this kind of storage for the size we want does not currently exist, but still in the realm of possibility in the future. So the alien DNAs are stored there when scanned by the device. And if that alien is chosen to be transformed, the device sends the alien chosen data to the small quantum computer within the watch, which will analyze the data and execute the transformation by programming each each of the 10 trillion nanobots to reconstruct the DNA in uniform to ensure everything is done well in an order. And when the QC is done programming them, which will be done in milliseconds, because this is a quantum computer, duh, the Omnitrix releases the 10 trillion nanobots through a permanent injection that the Omnitrix inserts into your body. And the injection won't pain you when transforming or when you are not doing anything. It's just the first time you put on the Omnitrix, you will feel it. However, when the nanobots enter your body, they are already pre-programmed by the supercomputer. So they know what each of their tasks is and where their tasks are meant to be carried out in the body and more on the nanobots. This type of nanobots we will use are very unique because they got to be very, I mean, very uh, small, like the same size as a DNA strand, which is around two nanometers in diameter. And it will also have a special coating around its body so it should not contaminate or irritate the body. And within the nanobot, it has to have a nano supercomputer within it for it to be able to process and execute its task. And it will also have arms, which it will use for the gene editing. And when we zoom out, we will see trillions of nanobots rearranging and reconstructing the human body. Where 20% of those nanobots will handle gene editing, they rewrite the DNA strand by strand. 40% of them also begin physically reshaping your muscles, bones, and organs. They rebuild your entire body to match the alien template. 5% simulate alien-specific biochemistry, like breathing methane or resisting radiation. 10% keep your body from dying during this insane transformation. They block pain, regulate your heart rate, and prevent organ shock. And 20% focus on your mind, mapping your brain, transferring your consciousness to match the new form while keeping you, well, you. And some of you also think this transformation process will take years or a very long time, but the actual transformation process in theory will just take seconds, possibly even 10 seconds, because we have 10 trillion nanobots all working to transform 
transform the body simultaneously. So it's not going to take long, and they will be moving relatively fast so as not to cause liquid friction from their movements in your blood. Okay, we solved DNA, now mass. And here comes the tricky part. When transforming into aliens like forearms or humongousaur, where do we get the extra mass from? I know how to solve this problem, but bear with me because this is where all the abstract, or as you normally call it, fictional science comes in. Because we can't just teleport mass out of thin air in the normal sense, so that's where my hyperversal quantum unfolding hyperspace theory yeah, I know, I like big words, or just pocket dimension theory for short, comes in. Here's where it gets insane. We store all the mass we will ever need in a pocket dimension. And I know you might be wondering, we can't just store mass in the traditional sense in space and retrieve it later. That's where I say, you're kind of wrong. Let me explain. Inside our Omnitrix, there will be space for a dimensional barrier or portal, which is connected to a pocket universe filled with energy. And thanks to Einstein, we know how to convert that energy into mass. The answer, the famous E equals MC squared equation. With this equation, we know that nine times 10 to the power of 16 joules are required to create one kilogram of mass. That number is insane because just to create one kilogram of mass, you would need energy equivalent to what the entire world consumes in a year. But let's just say that in this pocket universe, we have abundant energy needed because after each transformation, the energy would be recharged and stored there again for future use. And for that, we would need my energy to mass converter thingy 6000. I know, weird name. The converter pulls the needed energy turns it into math, and the nanobots inject it right into your body for the transformation process. Or you could ditch this pocket dimension side and stick to transforming into aliens with a similar build to human, but not gonna lie, that would be no fun. Okay, we've solved the mass problem, but how do you power this device? Okay, nice question. I'm glad you asked. My Omnitrix solves this problem with a tiny helium-3 fusion reactor. Fusion is the same process powering the sun. Helium-3 is rare, but extremely clean and powerful. Just a few grams could run the watch for centuries. Even better, this reactor converts fusion energy directly into electricity with almost zero waste. No overheating, no glowing, just a faint hum when you transform. That's it. And now we have successfully created a blueprint on how we could theoretically make the Omnitrix in real life. We talked about recreating the transformation process, solving the mass problem with a pocket dimension, powering this beast of a machine. Now let's go through a quick process of how this device will actually work. First, you scan the alien you want to change into. The Omnitrix scans all the alien DNA information. When you hit the Omnitrix to transform, let's say into Humongousaur, the Omnitrix knows this alien is big and prehand will convert the energy from the pocket dimension needed for the required extra mass. Some nanobots will carry that extra mass to your body, and the Omnitrix will also release the remaining 10 trillion nanobot to start reconstructing your body. When it's done, boom, you are a 12-foot lizard dinosaur. And I know everything in this video is theoretical and sometimes a little bit overreaching, but everything I said is still actually a solid and science-backed theory. But this device is nowhere near being made anytime soon. Nanobots this small don't exist yet. Pocket dimensions are purely hypothetical. Quantum storage and fusion reactors are decades away from being made. Even if we started tomorrow, it could take a century or more and billions of dollars to create even a prototype. But scientifically speaking, it's not impossible. Fiction could one day become reality. Before I wrap up, I know I said I made this video before, and that was on June, and it's now August. I could not make it sense because I was very busy, but it's here now, and I just want to say thank you guys so much. We just hit 4,000 followers on TikTok and 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, and I couldn't have done this without you. You guys are amazing. Also, I dropped some brand new merch, awesome design inspired by this channel Super Hero Team content. There's a link in my bio or description, and it's limited time discount if you grab one soon grab yours to support the channel now to hear from you if you could just something to just one alien which one would you choose drop your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to like share and subscribe for more peace it started when an alien device did what it did and stuck itself upon his wrist with secrets that it hid now he's got superpowers he's no ordinary kid spend time so if you see him you might be in for a big surprise he'll turn into an alien for your baby eyes He's slimy, creepy, fast and strong He's every ship inside He's Ben 10 With all new powers He's on the case Fighting off evil from Earth and space He'll never stop till he makes them pay Cause he's the baddest kid to ever save the day He's Ben 10